UCLA counter protests, all the agitators that came from all around the neighborhood to fucking beat on some students and do some West Bank style fucking pogroms in the middle of UCLA campus, dude. Anyway, here is the first 24 minutes of the attack at UCLA campus. Remember, they fucking uh, on GoFundMe raised a shit ton of funds specifically to set up a massive podium that is loud and disruptive to constantly play October 7 footage when they don't have uh, when they don't have like the worst techno music blaring. Okay. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld's wife, Jessica Seinfeld, gave $5,000, among many others. So as you can see, there is a necessity for why the encampments are protected this way, because people started when um, when the university system decided, eh, maybe we shouldn't protect these fucking students after all. Immediately, these sick fucks decided, oh, let's break into the fucking encampment because they are rabid dogs. <laughs> So the uniformed individuals you're seeing is campus safety. It's private security hired by the campus. And then you'll, you'll see some UCPD as well. It's so funny that they're like, take off the mask, you fucking pussies. Meanwhile, the fucking counter protesters are all wearing masks because they literally are there to do fucking violence. The students are wearing masks for two reasons. As we know, we've talked to the fucking student encampment, uh, media liaison people. They're wearing masks because they don't want to get doxxed and they're wearing masks for accessibility purposes. Now, of course, on the other side, the same people that are saying, take off your fucking mask, you pussies, are wearing masks. Okay, what do you mean by accessibility purposes? This is a fucking petri dish of disease if you don't actually properly protect yourself, especially if you're immunocompromised. What do you mean? That is the accessibility purpose there. One, how the people who ask for epilepsy warnings are never people who need them. They're just like the virtual signal. It's fine.
think they were agitators to purposely create chaos? I mean, look. What do you think they were doing there? Do you think they were there to simply ask questions? Even though when they go there to simply ask questions, the purpose is still the same, to agitate, to disrupt. Israel defenders always behave in the same exact ways that Israel does, like fucking fascists. Because they are fascists. Israel is a fascist state. Zionism is a fascist ideology. And those who are defenders of said fascist state and its fascist actions, such as ethnic cleansing, and its fascist maintenance of an apartheid regime, are of course going to behave in the same exact arrogant, violent ways as though they are, you know, perfectly nestled in the midst of the West Bank, where the Israeli occupying force will come in and defend them. They can do the pogroms, and then the IDF will come in and sweep it up. Look at this shit. Remember Montana Tucker crying the other day? Like, they won't let me ask questions. Are they playing babies crying? Too easy to disrupt legitimate protests. Fascism as a word has no teeth at all. Only in your bubble, not in the mainstream, not regular people. People don't even know what it means. It doesn't matter. That's precisely the reason why I use the term Nazis, because everyone knows what a fucking Nazi is. Okay? And yes, these counter-protesters are fucking Nazis. Through and through. Israel is a Nazi-style state. Israel's actions are identical to the Nazi regime and the Nazi state. I This is the reason why I use fascism and Nazism interchangeably, because most people don't know fascism, but they know what a fucking Nazi is. And the reason why they hate Nazis is because of fascism. <laughs> Identical is crazy. Is it? Is it though? Fascism is the underpinning ideological movement that the the uh, Zionist ideology represents. Same as the Nazis. Is it that crazy? Is it that crazy? Think about that. This ain't 2007 no more. Perhaps Israel should have uh, dialed it back a little bit if it didn't want the truth to come out about its actions. And for broad, broad populations in the Western world to see that reality. It is no longer relegated to the hyper-woke, socialist, anti-Zionist movements that you could just cast aside. Now you have an entire generation that sees the fucking truth. A lot of this stuff that would have been absolutely unimaginable, impossible to use, the terminology that was so quickly pounced on as anti-Semitic no longer, no longer hits as hard. That's another thing that you're seeing uh, uh, alongside the arrogance demonstrated by uh, Zionist defenders is like the idea that the old versions of the old versions of defending Israel no longer hit as hard nor do they work 
because people can actually see what Israel's doing. People are paying attention to what Israel is doing to the Palestinians. <laughs> How do you counter it? The counter to uh, Zionist gaslighting is just simply the truth. To speak the truth. That's it. And not mince your words. Something can come flying. Like some wood. Is this the place? I would say, yeah. Welcome to the rice fields, motherfucker. It's crazy. I had to turn my head to scream, bear scream. Spraying bear spray, so it's, it's hard to breathe over here right now. Bitch, nigga, snitch, nigga, hope, nigga, bitch, nigga, bitch, nigga, snitch, nigga, hope. Bitch, nigga, snitch, nigga, hope, nigga, bitch, nigga, bitch, nigga, snitch, nigga, hope, nigga, bitch, nigga, bitch, nigga, snitch, nigga, hope. Yeah, there it's like watching modern day fry cores, but stupider. Yeah, no, literally. <laughs> They're throwing stuff. <laughs> throwing stuff at the encampment. But well, black block, right? Remember, it's the it's the outside agitators. The anarchists have joined the fray. They are the ones. They are the ones who are agitating, right? It's so cool that the cops are just watching these motherfuckers like openly provoke, openly try to fight. They want to say it so badly. Oh, they do, for the record. They do say it. They have said it. <laughs> Yeah, then now they're playing the the Israeli 
the uh, Israeli TikTok song, the the uh, Zionist song, the choice song for the TikTok viral trend where they were like fucking torturing Palestinians that they've apprehended unjustifiably. It's so sick, man. <laughs> No, the cameraman here is not a third party. It's a film, The Police LA. He is an anarchist. Uh, he's a very famous uh, LA area anarchist who fucking is always uh, filming cops. They hate him. I think it was, his son might have been killed by the police, actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> have our disagreements but it doesn't matter he's he, he is always um yeah I, yeah his son i think was killed by the um los angeles police department um yeah he's um despite our disagreements sometimes i don't care he's great <laughs> No, the music is not edited in. They brought fucking PAs to blast Israeli music. All Israeli music is, is a version of like the shittiest techno you've ever heard or fucking Eurovision music. I swear to God. What was that back there? Pay attention to what's going on over here. Throwing shit. Trying to take off the... So, one must ask, why are they trying to take off the fucking barriers? Because they want to be able to... Because they want to be able to break in and beat the shit out of the students. Just so you know. Hitler Youth activities over here. It's just so fucking gross. It's so goddamn gross, dude. Ugh, it's so fucking gross. Watch your back. Hey, watch your back. Every time a poor Palestine student got outside the wall and beaten, they were swarmed like paparazzi with flash cameras. <laughs> yeah, My that God. music, again, is the song that became a viral trend in Israel with the Israeli occupying force bastards kidnapping Palestinians in the West Bank and torturing them with that song. Just so you understand. Yeah, the Alva song played by the Zionist counter protesters in so many of these videos is Mantara Im Matara, an Israeli children's song the IOF blasted on an eight-hour loop to torture captive Palestinians, which is, of course, which, of course, turned into a disgusting Israeli settler TikTok trend. <laughs> Like they started doing 
they they started doing it to themselves like because of how fun it was Just a fucking, just a psychopathic nation, dude. Sorry. It is just so fucking, it's sicko mode all the time, dude. Just not even remotely redeemable. Holy fuck. Playing music and other sound clips over the PA like this is a common psyop tactic that has been used in the military by the U.S. government. It's basically a form of torture to wear down an enemy and break people, especially the manner they're using it. Oh, yeah. These are mostly Christian Zionists, right? These counter protesters? Probably not. I don't know. But this is Los Angeles, so most likely not. I would say that there are far more radical anti-Zionist Jews in New York uh, than, uh, than Los Angeles. Many of the anti-Zionist Jews I spoke to at that encampment talked about how difficult it was for them to make Jewish friends specifically because of their... Uh, disinterest in <laughs> paying fealty to the state of Israel. Wait, hold on. Where were we? Let's get. Guys, just playing right through it. My guy is unfazed. What was that all about? I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Um, no, a lot of Persian Zionists and anti-Iran types and just general fascists. Yeah. I I, I thought it's about this right here. What you were talking about. Yeah. All right. Exactly. I mean, it's clear who started that. Now I, I, oh yeah, they They're masked up the all in black. I saw it, yeah. <laughs> Watch your back. <laughs> Ben Galib of TYT was among the mob as an observer. I wonder what he observed. Maybe he observed stuff that he did not like. Maybe he's no longer uh, defending Israel or Zionism in general. Who knows? Because I'm Watch observing, out. I'm observing a bunch of outside agitators coming down to campus to get a couple licks in on some students. Uh, at the behest of a fucking psychopathic, rabid, genocidal apartheid regime engaging in an act of ethnic cleansing in defense of such actions. That's what I'm observing. And when I observe this, I think to myself, gross, you're disgusting. Your parents should have swallowed you. You should have never been born. You are just a rabid, filthy little piece of shit. You know? That's what I'm observing. Oh my god, I can't see. They brought their bear mace out too. Yeah, then, then they started lighting fireworks, you know, towards the encampment. They started launching fireworks in the direction of the encampment. Go, get, use your backpack. Don't lose your backpack. That's the reason you wear no sunscreen. Chad was asking about it. Guys, I mean, just like just like the Israeli government, this is um, defensive fireworks. You don't understand. 
These guys are very threatened by the presence of an anti-genocide demonstration on UCLA campus. That's why they traveled to the UCLA campus to, to launch fireworks directly in the direction of the peaceful protesters, you know, as an act of self-defense because they were so scared that these uh, anti-Zionist Jews and anti-Zionists alike were threatening them by saying, hey, Israel, maybe you should cut it out. You know? Damn, last time a Palestinian lit a firework near Israeli checkpoint, they got sniped? Huh, yeah. Well, that kind of state violence goes only in one direction, not the other. <laughs> coughing because they're bear macing all around the counter protesters came in with bear mace specifically to bear mace the people in the pro-palestinian encampment yeah this was a funny change in the abstract uh but this is from a couple this is from uh two days ago pro-palestinian student activists many of whom are jewish boop, taken out of the byline Pro-Palestinian student activists say their movement is anti-Zionist, but not anti-Semitic. It is not a distinction that everyone buys. Why did they take out the many of whom are Jewish? There was so much mace in the air that the air was toxic to breathe, and I still have a sore throat. Yeah. Bear May stays in the air for a while. Fuck, oh, man, I can barely see. Yeah. Oh, God. Don't touch the eyes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Most of all, don't sweat. Yeah. It's hard to do it now. Oh, here, let me show that one more time. <laughs> update from ucla organizers they're gathering officers laws trying to get a number of chp and may attempt to clear the encampment today um also also uaw 4811 is planning on showing up on mass at 7 p.m pacific on ucla campus also another update ucla canceled classes today and declared the encampments illegal Faculty were threatening the strike today. They're currently in an emergency meeting to see how to respond to last night's situation and things as they progress. They say the encampment is illegal, but nothing about these actual crimes that we saw. Admin at UCLA canceled the classes today. Faculty are calling for a strike in support of students tomorrow. The way our students were left completely unprotected is shameful. This is an assistant professor at UCLA of Asian American Studies Department. Nur Judah. Calling all faculty. No work on Thursday, May 2nd. We call on all UCLA faculty to refuse university labor tomorrow, Thursday, the day after May Day, in protest of the university administration's egregious failure to protect the students' protest encampment from attacks by self-professed and proudly Zionist mobs coming to campus every night to enact violence. Chancellor Block pointedly ignored the well-being and safety of these students in his campus message sent on Tuesday and failed to acknowledge it in his message today. Students from the besieged encampment wrote last night, the life-threatening assault we face is nothing um, it, tonight is nothing less than a horrifying, despicable act of terror. Many students were injured, as were several faculty who rushed to the encampment to support the students. As faculty, we find our university administration to be complicit in such terror. We thus ask all faculty colleagues to show support for our students and stop work, including teaching tomorrow, May 2nd. The conditions imposed on our students are also our working conditions. We will continue to work stoppage if the university administration continues to fail our students. 
it's not just the students it's the faculty that is also uh joining the the protest as well uaw 4811 uh which is what i just mentioned is obviously not just auto workers but uaw is comprised not just only of auto workers but also grad students as well i suspect that that is the grad student union what check m hud logs one of them was literally a neo-nazi the guy that was coughing from pepper spray in the fireworks video is a neo-nazi more info on the uh, video and the thread oh this guy is i was there i got mazed by this older man uh was coordinating the boys speaking hebrew they all had the same look brown hair olive skin and beards if anyone has info about this guy let me know leave our kids alone they are a local transphobic movement that has been harassing our schools a group of israel supporters have attacked anti-war protester ucla university of los angeles in the u.s the group was filmed carrying out assaults and using fireworks and pepper spray on demonstrators at the gaza war protest encampment this is the info about the neo-nazi this guy narek palian is a neo-nazi zionist coordinated with a neo-nazi to attack jewish and palestinian students and journalists this man uh with the red bandana was one of the main agitators oh can anyone identify this man at ucla he assaulted a student at the encampment Pussy NPC. How brave. How brave are these fucking limp dick, cowardly fascist thugs to beat on a single fucking a single fucking uh, pro-Palestinian student that's trying to fucking fix the goddamn that's trying to fix the goddamn barricade. Worthless, worthless fucking scumbags. <laughs> Internet sleuths found out that man, and he's a healthcare worker in Israel. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, they're like NPC pussy pussy. Yeah, you on the other hand, you're fucking brave. This will get minimal coverage? No, it won't. And it's not. It's actually getting not minimal coverage, but a decent amount of coverage, at least on LA Times. As I showed you, UCLA cancels classes after counter protesters violently attack pro Palestinian camp. There's no uncertainty here. Okay? This is very clear cut. Very clear cut. They're just straight up fucking saying that the pro-Palestinian camp was violently attacked by counter-protesters and they are in the fucking wrong. The reason why they're doing this, the reason why they're openly showcasing this is because this is, this is beyond the pale, okay? It's beyond the fucking pale. It is such an obvious instance. It is such an obvious, gross Nazi fucking action against peaceful demonstrators that, that even the LA Times is not going to cover it with uncertainty. Of course, other national dick riders of Israel, like the New York Times, will still fucking say, police officers respond as clashes erupt the UCLA encampment. The university called in law enforcement officers to help after horrific acts of violence occurred on campus Tuesday night, an official said. Violence broke out as counter-protesters attempt to pull down barricades at a pro-Palestinian encampment. They didn't, violence didn't break out. They brought the violence. They were being violent. Oh, editors, UCLA's complicit in violence injected upon protesters failed to protect students by the editorial board of the Daily Bruin. This was the article that UCLA is censoring by the Daily Bruin editorial board. Here it is. Here's the down. I downloaded the article. It began with ear piercing, ear piercing screams of wailing babies loudly emitting from speakers. Counter protests are tearing down the barricades, laser pointers flashing into the encampment, people in masks waving strobe lights, tear gas, pepper spray, violent beatings, fireworks sparked at the border of the encampment, raining down on tents and the individuals inside. At around 5 p.m. yesterday, Chancellor Jean Block sent an email to the UCLA student body claiming the security presence of the area had been increased. That was not visible in the midst of the escalating violence. And even with the security present, there was no mediation far into the night. UC President Michael Drake expressed support for Block's decision to declare the encampment unlawful Tuesday evening, adding that 
action was needed when the safety of students was being threatened. And yet, in spite of official statements from the university and the UC, we witness little being done on the university's part to ensure the protection of students who exercise their rights. Mary Osako, Vice Chancellor of UCLA Strategic Communications, released a statement at 12.40 a.m. acknowledging the violence, adding that the fire department and medical personnel were involved. This came after a source in the encampment told the Daily Bruin that at least five protesters have been injured. Also, I posted this earlier today. In America, if you don't say you love Israel, either the police will beat you directly or they'll wait around and watch as fascist gangs do it on behalf of the state. We are sickened by this senseless violence, and it must end, Osako said. This came after a source in the encampment told the Daily Bruin that at least five protesters have been injured, but for hours, UCLA administration stood by and watched the violence escalated. LAPD did not arrive on scene until slightly after 1 a.m. Once Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass sent them in assistance at Block's request, Daily Bruin reporters on the scene were slapped and indirectly sprayed with irritants. Despite also being students, they were offered no protection. The world is watching. As helicopters fly over Royce Hall, Hall, we have a question. Will someone have to die on our campus tonight for you to intervene, Gene Block? The blood would be on your hands. The police, the police did not fucking intervene or interfere as Zionist thugs marched into campus and and did whatever the fuck they wanted to. Statement from the besieged UCLA Palestine Solidarity Encampment. The only means of protection we had was each other. We keep us safe. The university's hypocrisy is all too apparent. The university would rather see us dead than divest. Call on UCLA to disclose, divest, and end the silence. Despite the danger, we refused to engage standing by the principles of our encampment, self-defense. For all the school's pretense of student safety, we have experienced an unprecedented amount of violence and hatred while they stood by. The university's hypocrisy all too apparent as signs of this escalation were reported. Now, let me tell you something. Remember, I am reminded of the MLK video that uh, friend of the show Johnny Harris made where he said that, uh, the images of police brutally cracking down on civil protesters in the civil rights movement caused many in the United States of America to really question their loyalty to white supremacy, and we magically actually eviscerated racism in this country as a consequence of that. Does that feel, does that feel true to you right now, in this very moment? Um, now that you've seen all this... Aerial video shows security officers just watching from afar, not doing the one fucking thing that they were tasked with doing, which is protecting the students. There's an old, there's an old lady, a, a, a pro-Palestinian old lady that they're trying to rip the fucking barricade off of. And the fucking counter protesters are screaming, you have no chance, old lady. The idea of bravado towards children and the elderly rearing its head on U.S. college campuses. It's great. You stand no chance, old lady. We will fuck you up, old lady. We love beating on old ladies. What do you mean? We're here to defend Israel. Of course, we're going to do some Israel shit. Anyway, so let's hear what our beautiful, brave, bold, progressive beacon of justice in the world, Democratic administration, had to say about all this. I'm wondering if the White House has any response to the reports of violent clashes on UCLA's campus last night, uh, that there were there was a group of counter-protesters that tried to forcibly uh, dismantle the pro-Palestine encampment. Wait, check out the LA Times headline now, much more ambiguous. No, Dude, are you serious? Well, 
Consent is manufactured, everybody, right before your eyes. After violent protests, a UCLA UC president launches an investigation into response. After violent protests at UCLA, hmm, I wonder how that happened. Look at that. It went from UCLA cancels class after counter protesters violently attack pro Palestinian camp. Or ambiguous. Two. No. Dude, are you serious? Well, consent is manufactured, everybody. In real time, in fucking 4K. And the clash that resulted afterwards. So look, what I can say more broadly, any form of violence, we are going to denounce, we're going to call out, violent rhetoric, uh, any type of uh, uh, violence, uh, uh, we have to call out. That doesn't change anything. We're going to continue to do that. Thanks. Thanks for calling out the violence. Who's doing the violence? And eh, you know, we're just going to call out the violence. Yeah.